with uh, a lot of di different types of manufacturing and uh, servicing facilities. So it was really fun to hang out with you guys today and, and kind of have a round table meeting and, and entertain questions later and uh, hope this is beneficial to everybody. And Mike, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Zach Witz, IT Director for JW Speaker Corporation. Uh, we're a discrete manufacturer of headlights and other kinds of lights. Uh, we use both iCaris and iReady. Um, and we're in version of 10.00451 of Sightline or Cloud Suite Industrial, depending on who you're talking to, what its real name is. Uh, we went live about two and a half years ago. We'd like for this um, for this to be fairly conversational. Um, the folks that have joined us here today, you guys may have already gone through an implementation with um, Radley and Sightline, or you, you may be in the middle of an implementation with Radley and Sightline, or maybe it's something that you're considering for the future. So as we go along and ask Mike some questions today. Um, if you have any questions of your own, or after Mike has provided his answer, if you would like to provide a different perspective, please feel free. Um, we can, uh, you know, start some dialogue with within the the folks who are joining us, the, the audience members, as for so. We want everyone to feel free to join in on this conversation, and if there are questions that you have. Wish you had an outlet to ask questions. Let this be that outlet for yourself. So please feel free at any point to jump in and again ask a question of your own by an answer. Um, so we wanted to stop here today by doing uh, our Who was unfortunately unable to make it, Travis? Um, Kathy, do you want to just talk a little bit about um, Travis's company and what his what what products he uses? You bet. So um, I will stand in for Travis gladly. So they are a manufacturing company, uh, primarily in the automotive side of things. Uh, Travis is the IT manager. And I think if I was to uh, just do a single quote, he would have said, I wish I would have asked more questions. Yes. Yes, Travis has definitely um, to us. So, um, okay. And so we'll just go ahead and since we only have an hour, we're just going to get right into um, our discussion here. And um, so, Mike, since you're with us, we'll start by asking you. So, Mike, you had mentioned that you have two Radley products. You have Icaris, which we consider more of our automotive um, product, and then we have um, iReady, which is more of a strict translator. Um, so, Mike, can you explain to us um, how your business works? If, if I'm not mistaken, you have multiple divisions, so having multiple products made sense for you. So, can you tell us a little bit about that? and about um, how you're using the Radley Flightline integration for shipping in, in your um, various divisions, and if you have any third parties involved, why? Sure. The <clears throat> uh, side that we use for basically our OEM products, so um, Polaris, Harley-Davidson, John Deere, um, all of those folks that will send us blanket POs, um, 830s that go through uh, iCaris, and we like Um We also have an aftermarket group, which is 
a more of our standard product. So the customers there tend to be people like Granger, Transamerica, um, even PACAR is on that side of the house. And they just send us 850. So they send discrete POs um, that come in. Uh, we translate those into Sightline and then we ship those using PaceJet um, rather than shipping them out of, uh, say, Acaris or directly out of Sightline. Um, so that's how we use it. Super. And if I'm not mistaken, Mike, um, you had been using PaceJet previously before you brought Radley onto the scene, correct? Correct. Correct. And so for your iReady shipments, um, so iReady isn't really conducive to shipping so much. So just to explain a little bit, iReady, as I mentioned, is a translator. So we get data in, we, um, we kind of zhuzh it into whatever format it needs to be for your ERP to accept that data, um, whether your ERP is sideline or if you're using something else. All of the heavy lifting then happens within your ERP, your manufacturing, your shipping, uh, label printing, paperwork, et cetera. Then at that point, once your ERP has completed whatever it needs to for shipping, then you would import a file to iReady for us to translate and send back to the trading partner for both your ASNs, your invoices, um, could be PO acknowledgements, all sorts of different inbound and outbound documents. So Mike, um, instead of, since you had already been using PaceJet, um, did you feel that it was just easier to stick with PaceJet than to move to like the Sightline shipping software? Yeah, when we started this, um, we were on version eight of Sightline. So the pick, pack and ship functionality that is available now for us was not available. So you were left only with your standard order shipping capabilities within Sightline version eight, which didn't come anywhere near to providing some of the automated capabilities that PaceJet was able to offer. Understood. And um, so you've since gone through an upgrade then of Sightline to version 10. And Correct. at that point in time, did you also just decide that it was easier to stick with PaceJet than to add something new? If it ain't broke, don't fix it? Well, we kind of ran out of resources, right? It was on our was on our plan to re, to evaluate pick, pack, and ship within Sightline as a replacement for PaceJet, but we just did not have the the time or the resource to to do that during the upgrade process. So it's on our it's on our uh, calendar of things to review within the next before the end of the year. Great, that's great information. Thank you. And then um, Cassie, standing in for Travis as you are today. Could you explain to us a little bit about Westcon, um, how they're shipping the products that they use and, and, and how those shipments go back and forth? You bet. So uh, Westcon was a little bit uh, unique in the way they decided to uh, transition to Riley's mm -hmm. Icarus and what they chose to use as their shipping software. And just so everyone knows, uh, the hooks within Thoughtline are, um, flexible enough that you can use a translator that you want to use. Uh, you can use a shipping software that you want to use. And uh, we've worked with most, if not all of them. So the flexibility is in the uh, ERP software to, um, to connect to a lot of different softwares. But Travis's is different. So he decided uh, kind of at the same time that he was um, transitioning to Radley that they would also onboard a third-party software uh, shipping solution. Uh, so during this upgrade process, not only were we upgrading the Cylon product, we were also onboarding uh, Radley's Icarus and um, integrating a new third-party shipping. So that was enough to keep us busy. Um, and that was just a choice that was made by Westcon, and everyone realizes that every company gets to make choices of the parties' softwares that they want to work with. So in this situation, uh, one of the things that um, that that Travis wanted to make sure and relay to all parties on the call was that while he did depend uh, on his consultant, he he did wish that he had. Um, tested a little bit more, especially with, with the integration point between the uh, his third-party shipping solution and the information that was going to get sent back to ICARES. 
we had some exciting days in there during that process. Um, and actually, while things have leveled out now, Travis is also thinking about changing his shipping solution. So there you go about that. Things always tend to change. Uh, what did I leave out, Emily? I'm thinking about both sides of the conversation at the same time. I understand. I, I think you pretty well covered that there, Kathy. And as Kathy mentioned okay. about Sightline being flexible enough to, to hook into different softwares on all sides, um, Icaris is as well. And one of the nice things about the Icaris and Sightline integration is that it together is flexible enough for you to decide you can ship out of Icaris pass the shipment information over to Sightline. You can ship out of Sightline's take pack ship or their standard order processing or a third party and then send that information back to Icaris to translate and send on to the trading partner. So you have options. Um, typically when we're starting an implementation, um, one of the things that are one of the many things that Kathy and I are gonna wanna understand is how your business works currently, who your trading partners are, um, we all know that though EDI is supposed to be standard, we know that that's not the case. So depending on your business, um, how you're currently shipping, uh, the trading partners that you're shipping to, and what it is that you're looking to get out of the implementation, then Kathy and I can, um, along with you, kind of help guide you in the appropriate direction. So you know, thanks, Kathy. And that's a really good point. Thanks. And you know, that's a really good point, Emily, if you don't mind, is like, you know, obviously we're doing a lot of talking. Um, you know, we're the ones representing Bradley and JD Knowles and, and we've got a lot of experience in the process and we will ask a lot of questions, no doubt about it. But I would just say a general, just from my perspective, when you're working with a solution, you know, please make sure that solution and its representatives actually take the time to listen to what it is that you need because that's also part of our job is to listen to what you do and to offer suggestions we will still ask a lot of questions mind you but uh please look for someone that's willing to listen to you very good point thanks kathy And um, we'll start with Mike. Um, we want to talk a little bit about the process. Um, how long did your implementation take? What lessons did you learn? Um, what do you wish you would have known before starting? Maybe you would have chosen to make some different decisions. So, Kathy, so Kathy and I are pretending that we don't know as much about his solution as we do <laughs> so that Mike can walk us through this. But so Mike, while you're talking about this, if you wouldn't mind talking about, um, you know, the, the need to be flexible with your dates and to be honest about where you're at and how ready you are for things. So if you don't mind telling us a little bit about how long your implementation took and what did you learn? Uh-oh, you're, you're muted, Mike, sorry. I was saying, uh, you know, I tried to forget a lot about that implementation, but <laughs> <laughs> I think we were probably six to eight months by the time we finally got things cleaned up the way we wanted to. Um, uh, the things, so this was my first EDI implementation. Prior to this, I, I had not been involved with EDI at, at all. So first off, I'd have probably done a lot more preliminary work to get a better understanding of EDI before we got started. We had we had uh, 13 different trading partners that we were working with, so it was a pretty um, large data set. Um, so the things that we didn't do, and you guys know this as well as I do, is we did not test, validate every single transaction that we were bringing into Sightline, and we should have, right? In some cases, we might have looked at 30% of the transactions, and in another case, maybe 25% for each trading partner. We should have looked at them all because we certainly missed a lot of, of uh, errors by only looking at that small percentage of the uh, transactions. Um, and in our case, we also had a lot of 
uh, homegrown components where we were doing post-processing of the EDI transactions after they entered site line. And those things were not properly taken into account, nor were they properly documented ahead of time by the previous uh, group that ran IT. Um, so we tried to move as many of those things into the Radley product as we could, rather than keeping them inside Sightline directly, which I would recommend for anybody if you're playing around with your data inside of Sightline after you get it, um, that you transition as much of that over to the Radley side, let them do the manipulations because they have a better framework than just about all of us do for, for managing those um, changes. So milk runs, things like that, if you can handle those all inside of Radley before it gets to um, Sightline, you're going to save yourself a lot of headache. Um, let's see, what else did we ask? What were the other questions there? Um, so it was how long, um, what lessons did you learn, what do you wish you would have known before starting? Um, so we covered most of that. I think uh, one of the other things that was obvious uh, coming out of it was that uh, if you've got greater than five or six trading partners and they're large trading partners, uh, having the EDI coordinator uh, is something that uh, we're pushing for right now. What happens is for us, we get a uh, responsibility split between IT and customer service, and neither one of those is really got it in their job description to manage the day-to-day -day ins and out of EDI. And you, you need someone to do that who's a single person that's responsible for those um, functions and making sure that if something, an error happens uh, at eight o'clock on Monday morning and the import that that gets looked at before nine o'clock, right? It doesn't help if it doesn't get looked at until after MRP runs because now you're, if it's an issue, now that issue's run down through your supply chain. So um, having the EDI coordinator and make sure all of that works well and stays uh, tied in together um, is essential, especially when you get a large number of trading partners. Absolutely. Yeah, I think Kathy and I both definitely agree with that. An EDI coordinator okay. is a very good choice for a company of any size if you're dealing with a lot of EDI. Um, Mike, do you want to also, would you mention um, the, what made you decide, so so I can say that we pushed back the go live date at JW Speaker twice, I believe. Yep. And do you want to talk about how and why we came to that decision? Well, I think part of it was we were not comfortable with um, the data results that we were seeing, and uh, we had a lot of unanswered questions. I think that uh, we just didn't have a, a good feel for, and um, part of it was obvious was a gut feeling. I just didn't think that we were ready. Certainly, the first time, um, and so it's best to be ready and make sure that you're as ready as you can be because there, you're going to miss things. Even if I mean, there were cases where we looked at the data, it looked just fine and dandy. We cut over, and then that same data we looked at there was something wrong with it, right? Um, and the other thing we decided not to, that I would do differently, we decided not to contact our trading partners to let them know we were switching uh, EDI software because we thought that would require an extended period of time to test every single, you know, 15 trading partners. We'd have to go through a testing regime with all of them to make sure that their data was coming through cleanly. Uh, if I had to do it again, I would do that. I would I would take that extra time and I would run a test with every trading partner to make sure it was coming through exactly the way we wanted it to and that they were comfortable with it rather than firefighting after the fact and they find out you switched trade you switched uh, providers on us and you didn't tell us. Mm -hmm. Most of them were okay with that as long as the data came through fine. Um, but um, I think it would have been a much more structured and a much more clean implementation had we done that. It would have taken a year and a half instead of six months, but um, uh, it would have been, it would have, everybody would have been on the same page then, so. Sure. And then before we move over to Cassie, I do just want to say too, Mike did 
a great job during that implementation of um, there were lots of wild goose chases because as he mentioned um, he had um, recently come on board with JW Speaker and had just recently taken over what they were currently doing for EDI. So as Cassie mentioned before, she and I will ask you why 500 times on something and Mike, to no fault of his own, his answer a lot of times was, I have no idea. <laughs> this was what I was given. Um, so, so Mike had to do a lot of, of searching and wild goose chases and then just some blind decision making not understanding why a decision had been made to do something a particular way, then it was really up to him and the business to decide, are we going to keep doing it that way, even though it doesn't make sense, or are we going to make some changes? So Mike had a, a lot of, of work to do in that implementation. Um, Kathy, do you want to mention anything else in regards to the JW Speaker implementation, or would you like to start telling us a little bit more about Travis's experience at Westcon? I guess just just a couple of things to to recall is um, yeah there there were coming from a different EDI software provider and moving transitioning into uh, that lack of documentation which um, is is really just a hint for all of us from this point forward to document what it is that we do. And if we're going through a process with you during the implementation and we haven't talked about documentation, you need to call us out on it. I mean, chances are we're, we're, we're going to, but I mean, it's just so important. And there's a storm raging behind me too. So, um, do, you want me to, <laughs> do you want me to go ahead and transition into Travis? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So, um, Working with Westcon and Travis, um, they're a small manufacturing company. And there was a misnomer at the beginning that EDI belonged to customer service. And so then a lot of times conversations that were had belonged to customer service. And um, uh, we know that EDI goes, you know, it's, there's a circle of life in your system. You know, the orders are born there and then they're shipped there. And so when we're talking about EDI, it is more than just customer service. It can include information that's passed information that's passed to shipping. And obviously it comes back to invoicing. So we want to look at EDI um, in, in, in total beginning to end and just tell you that customer service is not the only people involved in EDI, just as maybe it's um, at the beginning. Um, one of the things that Travis wished, just like Mike mentioned, is that he had tested more. Uh, thinking that when when we ask for scenarios, because you know, from the sideline perspective, you have regular orders, you have blanket orders, you could be standard shipping, you could be pick pack ship, you could be shipping in already, you could be shipping in pay ship. There are a lot of uh, things that would be unique about your implementation. And so um, maybe having categories of testing that are too broad or making assumptions that when I tested, um, you know, one customer that, well, this customer is just like them. You know, from the surface, they may be, they may seem like that, but there's a super chance that when you get down into it, there is information that is different between Harley Davidson and, and so, you know, uh, just as we dig and we move forward and we talk to men and we talk and we test, um, you can't do, um, you know, too much testing. Um, you know, there are components, and, you know, Mike touched on this earlier, uh, that moves data from Bradley to Sightline. And while it's, it's it in its construct is a minor component, it becomes super major if something's not right with it. Um, so, you know, just having the EDI in your EDI software, just having the EDI order inside of Sightline, just making sure it's shipped, um, we can't, can't you know, um, emphasize enough that testing, um, Junction, how important uh, that can be, and of course, with 
with Travis and Westcon, having multiple new junctions just means you have to um, test more. So did I answer all those questions at the beginning, Emily? I kind of get excited, a little bit carried away with this. <laughs> I do believe so. How long did it take? Um, what lessons did you learn and what did you wish you know beforehand? I think you answered pretty well on that. Yeah, so we were less than a year. So I think we were around the eight or nine months. Um, you know, and it it was not bad. It could have been shorter. Uh, obviously, towards the end, similar to uh, to Mike, we had some pretty long days and nights while we were discovering things that that were hidden or that were forgotten or for whatever reason they just showed up and we had to deal with them. Uh, so uh, a lot of hours there. So get some dedicated consultants or people who are dedicated to your process. Um, you know, again, things that Travis wish he'd known is just is to test more. And he would say that again if he was here. Like Travis, what's the one thing? Test, test more. Great, thank you, Kathy. Which is, um, what advice would you give to a company that is gearing up for a PDI implementation? And this is another for anyone. Um, if you have specific questions, please feel free to jump in. But Mike, do you want to go ahead and take the ball with that? Sure. One of the things, if if you're not already doing consolidated invoicing and delivery orders, you got to prep yourself for that if you're going to use Icarus because that's how uh, you have to ship. And if you don't haven't used consolidated invoice before, now you've got to make sure your consolidated invoice report looks like it's supposed to. You have to understand that it's coming in through the delivery orders form and uh, customer order shipping error processing. Uh, form in that you're going to have to look in that and keep an eye on that uh, to make sure that things are flowing through cleanly. Otherwise, if they don't, you're going to end up with remediation that you're going to have to go through to clean it up. Um, so that's a big one. Um, the other one, I made a note here. Um, so uh, one of the downfalls from Sightline, from what their perspective from EDI is, they do not handle 860s, which are purchase discrete purchase order changes. So those have to be done manually. So this is really a Sightline issue. It has nothing to do with Radley. Um, and you're transferring files back and forth between the systems, and that can all, you just gotta keep an eye on that to make sure that that continues to stay clean. Um, so we put in a lot of uh, error checking to make sure that the files got where they were supposed to, when they were supposed to get there, and that they were imported properly in Sightline. In Sightline 10, the import process is a little bit touchier, would you say, Cassie? <laughs> it, it's not as a rock solid of an import process as it was under 8, let's put it that way. Um, it doesn't like to have its files anywhere but on the utility server. That's basically what we found. If you try to use a share to hold the files, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So um, keep it as clean as you can and double check to make sure that all the files are being transferred where they're supposed to, when they're supposed to be transferred. Yes, that, is, that can be a delicate uh, process, that's for sure, because again, you know, You've got different softwares and you think those are the major components, but if if they're not communicating properly and the data is not moving from one place to the other, then totally um, nothing good is going to happen out of that. Um, I think one of the things that Travis would have also mentioned is that if um, if you're in a migration process, then you may have orders that pre-exist in your system and uh, that pull forward. and so. Uh, be sure to not only test what happens when you load new data and how the system reacts to that, be sure and test how the system reacts when you load data. And there is also the pre-existing blanket order, say if we're talking about 830s or 862s, um, because that may react differently and we wanna make sure that we have uh, scenarios. 
I would say um, Travis would have wanted uh, to to have some some documented testing scenarios. So you know when you when you query uh, customer service, like what are some of the exceptions? What are some of the things that happen when this customer does this? What is supposed to happen? What are the things that I have to do when this customer does this? You know they create unique scenarios here, and if we have those scenarios documented then we can make sure we test each one of them and um, that'll, that'll save a lot of headache for later. So I think Travis would have wished to, to have had more testing scenarios, which is testing, so sorry, more testing. <laughs> is there a general theme here about testing? <laughs> <laughs> what? So Cassie, then from your own perspective, I guess, if you're going into a new implementation, do you have a piece or two of advice that you always try to impart, um, whether whether it's taken or not? What what are some of the big things you really want to make sure people are aware of? Um, you know, Mike mentioned having an EDI coordinator. Um, how how positive that can be on an implementation, and uh, the EDI coordinator kind of feels they they fill the position of knowing uh, things about raw data and they know how the customer sends this data and then the EDI coordinator also knows how the data reacts inside of Sightline. So if that person doesn't exist on staff, then um, a lot of times that's what I do is, is help empower someone who could be that uh, EDI coordinator. Um, and just as important though, I think that that Mike would um, give me a hallelujah is that you know EDI is not an IT process. It has technical <laughs> aspects. Yes. Hallelujah. It has technical aspects. <laughs> you know, data has to move. We have to have our entry and exit points and all that sort of sort of stuff. But you know, EDI belongs to the different aspects of the uh, the sideline system, as in customer service and manufacturing and uh, shipping. And so it's important to have all those people included in the process. I could think of some things like, you know, Mike, maybe towards the end, and it's kind of like just jumped in my head. It's like, was like, oh, you know, what about the planning information? And how do the planners look at that? And that was a pretty important question. That was a really big topic. And, you know, they weren't in the process as soon as they would be if we were doing this again. So, you know, mine is that, um, while EDI is technical, it it doesn't necessarily belong to EDI. Having an EDI coordinator can help bridge the gap between, um, you know, Sightline and the software system, and having all the components um, from Sightline present while we're going through and testing and asking questions. I think is paramount. Very good. Um, if I was to give a piece of advice, of course, we have several, but one of my biggies is going to be to um, be um, choosy, I guess, of who it is that you are choosing to um, put on your implementation team. Um, of course, we don't, we're not saying that because we just want yes people. We want your feedback. We want, if someone has a different idea of how something should work, um, we definitely want to hear it. Um, we want to understand why, because again, you and the people that are actually out there doing your day-to-day -day processing know better than Kathy or I ever could of how things currently work at your facility. Um, what we don't find to be so useful are people who are afraid of the change that's coming um, or people who don't want to embrace the fact that a change is coming. Um, I'm sure I can speak for Kathy as well when I say that I have gone into companies where we have basically just recreated everything that they're doing currently, whether it's right or wrong, because that's the way they do it and that's the way they want to do it, um, which you wouldn't be changing softwares if what you were doing currently was working. Um, we are going to spend a lot of days together. We're going to spend hours and hours and hours together in conference rooms, combing data, asking you why certain things are going on, um, coming up with different or better solutions. So we need the people on the team to be amenable to being a part of that team. 
um, and, and not trying to derail the team, which has happened before too. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time together. We might not like each other <laughs> during all of that time that we spend, um, but for the most part, when you get a good team that all has the same goal in mind in the end, then we're all going to have a better implementation, um, a better go live, and um, you know better subsequent work after that. So if you put together your team and you identify that there might be a member that is not really working towards the same goal as the rest of the team, it's never too late to make a change. I think that's probably my biggest, my biggest one. Um, do we have any anybody anybody who's listening or watching any questions from the crowd out there? You can either feel free to come off mute and just ask it, or you can ask in a comment. Uh, meanwhile, Mike, is there anything else that you wanted to mention that we have not asked you yet? Anything else you um, want to bring up or tips or things you wish you'd done differently? Check my notes here. Uh, yeah, a couple of things that I for, I didn't mention. One, uh, on the iReady side, we also use that for outbound POs. So if you have outbound POs you're sending to your suppliers, you can do that through um, iReady. So it's a, it's a EDI un, unload transaction routine that you run in Sightline, and it, and it spits out the POs, um, and you can send that through I ready and that goes out to your suppliers. We only use it for one currently, but that's one of the areas where we think we'll be doing some expanding in the in the next year. Uh stay out other outbound EDI to our, our suppliers. Um, we we struggled a little bit about whether how do, <clears throat> whether or not we should have just one shipping software or two shipping mm -hmm. softwares, because obviously you have to be able to understand how to ship out of Icarus and how to ship out of PasteJet, either of which are that straightforward, pa or Icarus is more straightforward than PasteJet is. So we thought about, you know, is there a way, and I think we'll probably think more about it in the future, is there a way to have one shipping product to do both, right? Um, that's something that, that we'll talk about. The other thing, and we mentioned this when we talked last time, Emily, is... Um, we're doing file transfers back and forth. Uh, we'd love to see it translate, translate into an API interface between the two programs, right? Mm -hmm. So that particularly on the 850 side, when an 850 comes in to uh, the van, you guys were having Radley um, check the van, I think every hour. When a new 850 comes in, I'd love it to be pulled uh, directly into Sightline at that time, not having to wait till the next, next batch runs because we're only doing it twice a day for 850s, and uh, there are times when we need those those purchase orders from some of our vendors faster than that. Um, and then, if you're using the API, it doesn't get stuck in the in the import process in any way. So, um, I'd love to see a transition to using APIs uh, for transferring all the data back and forth. It eliminate eliminate a lot of the issues. It gives you a lot more chance of doing air checking at the moment that you're doing the data transfer rather than after you've already got the file and you're trying to import it. So um, to me, I think that would be big. And I'd love to see Sightline get 860s added to the repertoire. I mean, you're manually making those changes in Sightline when a when a 860 comes through because it spits out a report from uh, iReady I and then someone has to go manually make that change. Yeah. And Mike, I had taken down, um, you had mentioned um, the, the API suggestion when we spoke last week. Um, so I took that note down and I have forwarded that feedback along. So thank you. And then with the 860, um, so my, as Mike mentioned, he has the two different products. He has iCaris and iReady. iReady, again, just kind of a straight translator where we're not doing any sort of manipulation to the data. Um, in iCaris, um, we're able to get around that a little bit better by um, we treat the 850s actually as 862s. Um, so as they come in, that way we're it's just like we're all, as if we're updating a release instead of it just being a standing purchase order. 
and then we're able to make an update to the 852, or excuse me, to the 850, which we're treating as an 862 in ICARIS, and then export that over to SightLine. So, um, so depending on which product you use, too, there's a little more um, uh, capabilities in ICARIS. Um, but again, it all kind of depends on your business and which product is most appropriate. Just a thought that came to me, but as long as you're going to give feedback uh, to the folks, it would be great to be able to use the iCare shipping product to ship out of iReady, too, because that would be a yes. solution for us to be able to have one shipping product. You are not the first person who has brought that up. So I will definitely forward that along as well. Kathy, was there anything either on behalf of Travis, who unfortunately was unable to join us last minute today, um, was there anything, Kathy, on his behalf or of your own that you wanted to bring up? I'll just say in general, because, you know, obviously there are, um, you know, three different companies represented here, right? So, you know, Mike is kind of representing Sightline. Uh, you know, I'm representing J.D. Knowles Consulting. Emily's representing Radley. And so just, just a note to everybody, and I'm sure everyone here is seasoned, is like when, when you're looking for um, integration points, um, you know, shy away from companies who say that they can do it all. Um, or no, we don't need to help, or we don't need to talk, or we, you need partners who are willing to work together with you to improve your processes, else why would you be going through this search and investment mission? Um, there are a lot of things that um, think is really important from the integration and the consultant perspective is it's okay to say I don't know. I just need to write it down and that's an action item for me to find out how or why or what. Uh, so, so to me, I think just to generalize, it looks like partners who are willing to work together for your success. Very good point, Kathy. Um, just in regards to um, the maybe there we go. Um, to some of the standard import and export functionality between the Radley and Sightline products. Um, I say standard because uh, working together, Radley and JD Knowles Consulting Group have also come up with some of our own um, imports and exports that we've been able to use at various customers that we've worked on together. Um, so we've got, of course, all of the standard integration, which um, the Radley Sightline integration is a 30-year partnership. We've been working together for a very long time. Um, and then again, with the J.D. Knowles Consulting Group, over the last nine years or so, um, we have been coming up with some additional um, benefits uh, to the integration that might not come along as part of your standard Sightline product, but are definitely... Um, if there's something that you need, um, you know, Kathy and her group and Radley are always willing to put our heads together to come up with the best solution to fit your needs. Um, and then let's see. So this is again just a kind of basically the what I just said, as far as the Radley and J.D. Knowles, obviously um, you have options when it comes to um, who you're going to use for your EDI translation and your release accounting and your, um, your ERP software. And within the ERP software, who are you going to be using as a partner to help you implement? Um, so there's definitely options that are out there. Um, the Radley J.D. Knowles partnership um, has been a very successful one for the last nine years. Um, we've been able to um, to help some customers overcome some things that um, they, they didn't think were going to be able to be overcome. So 
Um, if you have any questions as you're watching, and again, whether you're already in an implementation or considering an upgrade or considering a brand new implementation at all, um, if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to contact um, the Knowles group or any of us are very happy to answer questions that you may have or get you some ideas for quotes or talk to you about upgrades, any of that. So um, Kathy's and my information um, and our websites are here. Um, we're going to also, I've been recording this presentation. So this presentation will be um, eventually uploaded to both of our websites and, and added to our social media. Um, and we'll be emailing this out to everyone who expressed interest in joining us today. So if there's anything, questions that maybe you have, you're Um, please, at this point in time, feel free to reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to help you and answer your questions and point you in the right direction. Absolutely. Okay, so it looks like we've got about 12 minutes to spare. Um, if no one has any questions, we certainly don't want to eat up your next 12 minutes for no reason. Uh, we all know your time is valuable. so. Um, uh, Mike and or Kathy, any parting remarks here? Um, I would just like to say, Emily, thank you for hosting and allowing me to be on and um, and sharing in this experience. And a, a side note on the uh, the Radley product, uh, I have worked with a lot of EDI service providers, and you know, a lot of times um, you you get a lot of attention up front. And when you get turned over to the 1-800, please help me now, then uh, sometimes the response is not so slick. So I have to say that, you know, if you're all in service after the service, uh, the Riley Corporation does a great job, very good job. Thank you. I'd also like to add that uh, if you're doing an implementation and things go sideways, I'm glad I had both of these two on my team because they're both extremely willing to roll their sleeves up and dive into the details to get it worked out. We spent countless hours working on the data uh, to figure out why it was coming in the way it was, and, and both of these folks have, uh, uh, have certainly uh, earned my appreciation. Thanks so much, Mike. Thank you very much. Right. All right. Well, thanks to everybody who has joined us here today. Again, we'll make sure that we get this link uploaded to our website and our socials and emailed out to everybody. Um, please feel free to reach out if you have any other questions. And I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank thanks, thanks for making it available. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.